before I get started on this review, I want to thank Freddie Thomas and as well as Rico Hill for inviting me to their Skype chat last night during Raw. I had a blast. These guys are awesome. If you haven't checked out their YouTube channels, check out their YouTube channels. I will leave their, their channels um, in the description box below for you guys to check them out. And definitely check out what Cream well, can't call him Cream Crazy anymore, but check out what Freddie Thomas has in store for his channel. Now that I got that out the way, <laughs> let's get started with this review. Dean Ambrose is the man. Honestly, Dean Ambrose is who made the show last night. The opening, I will have to admit, the opener was pretty funny because Stephanie always has the balls to say the one thing that nobody else can say. And that is CM Punk being a quitter. Nobody wants to talk about CM Punk, especially in his hometown. But I will admit that Stephanie always is bold enough to say something like that. And it was great that she did. And then you start off with them, the, the authority, as well as with Paul Heyman. And it's always great to hear Paul Heyman. Because Paul Heyman is probably one of the best heel managers up there. And him representing Brock... Lesnar, after what Seth Rollins did, was pretty cool. And it also makes Seth Rollins to be the overall target of the entire show, which is legit because he pretty much screwed not one, but two people. Actually, he screwed not one, not two, but three people. But only two of those people can represent themselves. So, yeah, of course, you had John Cena pretty much one to lay waste to Seth Rollins. And then you had Dean Ambrose going against um, but trying to go and beat up Seth Rollins. But the one thing I love is the fact that there's really no love between John Cena and Dean Ambrose. It's about who gets Seth Rollins first. And he was like, I don't like people taking food out of my mouth. You got to admit, that was a great line for Dean Ambrose. And it absolutely represents who Dean Ambrose really is. A guy that gets what he wants and he will get through anyone to get who's in his way. And I, I like that. I really did enjoy that segment. There were lots of enjoyable moments that actually happened. I will say that I'm not a big fan of Adam Rose. I am somewhat becoming a fan of the bunny because more likely I'm curious to know who the bunny is. But the crocodile, oh my gosh. The little mini croc that was out there that when um, Hornswoggle dresses a mini croc against the little bull, and once again they have a rivalry. I think that was cute. That was so stupid it was entertaining. And finally 3MB... Well, it's not really 3 and B anymore. It's like one and a half B actually <laughs> represented <laughs> with um, <clears throat> a represented in the ring. Like seriously, it was it was pretty cool, and <laughs> it was so stupid. It was funny. I can't necessarily hate on that. But the one interesting talk point of the night was the vignette that we saw about Bray Wyatt. Now. It was something completely different. With Halloween coming around the corner, it's great to actually push Bray Wyatt as creepy as Bray Wyatt is and the Wyatt family, but they're no longer a family anymore. We saw in the vignette that he actually let Luke Harper go and allow, he, he was like, I fixed him. There's nothing more I could do. I let him go. And now we got Luke Harper actually going on his own in a singles push, which is pretty great because Luke Harper is one of the best wrestlers around. Uh, Rowan isn't that ready. I don't think he's, wrong. He, he's ready yet. So, yeah, it makes sense for him to stick around with Bray Wyatt, but Luke Harper has been ready. And I'm happy to see that. I'm actually looking forward to seeing what they're going to do with Luke Harper, especially his theme music. Hopefully, it'll be a lot better than what it was before. But there were a few sour points in the middle of the night, except for one. Now, we know that Natalia and Tyson Kidd on Total Divas are going through a rough patch. And they kind of played that out in the ring. And honestly, it was pretty interesting. And it actually kind of keeps you in tune with the show. So I will say that it was pretty smart. But the one thing that I didn't necessarily understand was what during Nikki's little moment that she had out there on the mic. She's not that bad, but, her, the, but the feud is stupid. The feud is uncomfortable and stupid. But not only what would be stupid is you get the most unexperienced wrestlers to go out in the ring and beat up on a vet. That makes no sense. I love Eva Marie, 
Y'all know how much I promote her. Y'all know how much I'm saying that she's getting better. She's starting to learn more and her, starting to learn a lot more when it comes to wrestling, starting to develop who her character is. The same thing with Cameron. They're both learning. But when it comes to going against Brie Bella, I just don't think they're ready yet. You don't want to put them out there to fail, especially if they're trying to get better. You don't want to squash them before they can grow. That's like stepping on a, a on a bud of a plant before it's a full plant, and yet you're stepping on the little bud that comes out of the ground. When you step on the bud, you choke out the plant. That's what they're doing in this case. You can't put two inexperienced wrestlers out there until they get full-fledged bloom, like until they become experienced at what they're doing. And I just think that was a really stupid thing that they did. But either or, they did their best to put on a show. You can't hate on that. I'm not going to completely hate on them, but I don't agree with how they booked it. That's just me personally. But I will say that towards the end of the show, it was, you did get pretty tired <clears throat> watching some of these matches because some of the matches there were somewhat pointless. But I will say that it's kind of interesting to see Jamie Noble after all these years being a minion uh, to, to the authority. Him and his sidekick. <laughs> I'm trying to remember who that guy's name is. I've seen him before, but it's lost me. And that what shows me that these guys are somewhat forgettable. But either or, it was interesting to actually see these guys go out there. It was interesting to have these guys back on screen as a minion. So it was kind of kind of cool to watch the ending though yeah you know it, it was kind of it was kind of predictable you have randy orton's match and of course the heels are triumphant um i'm happy that cena wasn't because i'm hoping that they make cena a little bit more human after this but we'll see honestly y'all my overall thoughts of the show is this the show wasn't all that bad it was entertaining in the most dumbest of spots i had interest when it came to the bray wyatt vignette and what they're going to do with luke harper and the opening of the show was awesome not to mention the crowd you would expect the crowd of chicago to be chanting cm punk throughout the entire show they really didn't they were more chanting dean ambrose which shows that they did their job and so did dean Dean Ambrose is being pushed a lot more and a lot harder than Seth Rollins and Roman Reigns. So honestly, I'm looking forward to what they're going to do with Dean Ambrose. And I think that this was an okay show and quite entertaining, even in the dumbest spots. I enjoyed it. I really did. But guys, I want to know your overall thoughts of the show. Leave a comment in the comment section below or send me a video response on how you personally feel about um, Monday Night Raw what you would do if, if it needed to be changed and how you personally feel about it and also i'm kind of interested to know to hear y'all's theories about what they're going to do with luke harper because i really think it's gonna they're gonna do some great things with him this is nature girl 30 signing off peace out later